If I asked you, do you want to punch faster? You would probably say yes. Who wouldn't want to punch faster if you had the option? Well, on this video, we're going to give you eight exercises that you can do that's going to really help improve your hand speed. Also, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a bonus tip that I used to do when I was training in every single session that really did help improve my hand speed. And for this video, I brought along my good friend, BJ Godot, who is the former fitness director of Men's Health, and he's a fitness expert. You should definitely check out his YouTube channel for a lot of strength and conditioning videos. So starting with number eight, and this is something that I used to do as well. We've just been speaking about is shadow boxing with dumbbells. And you're a fan of this, right? I am, yeah. And the key is you just can't go too heavy. I think a sweet spot yeah. is like maybe three pounds max, but usually one to two pounds is perfect. You know, 16 ounce gloves are a pound, consider that. So going two pounds is twice as heavy as, as any glove you would wear in a competitive fight for the most part. So that's really the ideal situation. Going too heavy, it's gonna be hard to keep your arms up and you're gonna start your form and get all messed up. And what I used to do with the dumbbells was starting off my shadow boxing with them, where I would hold them for 45 seconds. I would shadow box, punching as fast as I could. And then after 45 seconds, dropping them. And then you can see the speed improve straight away. Then picking them up for 45, dropping them for 45. And that right there is a three minute round. And we used to do that all the time. And I would really feel a difference, not only in my hand speed, but also in the condition in my shoulders as well, because you've got to keep your hands up. And like you mentioned, if you've got weights that's too heavy, what that's going to do, it's going to drag your arms down and hurt your form. And you know, there's a higher chance of injury as well, because when you're putting this out and it's putting that strain on your back. Put too much pressure on your shoulders. And again, it doesn't take a lot of weight to get the contrast effect. All you're looking for is what's called the overspeed effect. It's like when you sprint uphill, and then you immediately go to sprinting on land, you feel so much faster because yeah. you've excited your nervous system. So it's double the weight, that's plenty of extra weight, even though it's light two pound dumbbells and some, some people have the ego of like, I never use anything less than fives, like that's my limit. Two pounds is plenty for this particular training effect. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So that's number eight, let's move on to number seven. So number seven is the speed plank tap. So this one is an excellent way. I love this as a starter, going 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, or let's say three to five minutes. Really excites your nervous system, it'll activate your core and shoulder stabilizers, and really gets you fired up to get into some good boxing work. So you can put on the ground, a, a dumbbell like this, or even a medicine ball, or if you're right in front of a heavy bag, and all we're doing here is get into a plank position, and as fast as you can for 10 seconds, you're alternating between tapping the bell. And the further I get away, the more I'm reaching, the harder it is. So you can also with a partner, I go 10, he goes 10, and then we just go back and forth three to five minutes, recover, and it's just, it's a great way to get some quick hand reaction going and just warm things up. Yeah, I can really see how that's going to improve your hand speed when you're up in the high plank, your shoulder endurance as well. You're basically doing, I mean, when, when I'm touching with the other arm, I'm in a single arm plank, but it's so fast that again, just a lot of fast switch fiber engagement, which is a great thing to warm up. You want to get those fast switch fibers going if you want to emphasize speed. Yeah, great. Okay, so moving on to number six with a resistance band. I love resistance training, especially for boxing. 100%. What's so great about these bands, and again, what you want to do with this one is go with a lighter option. When you're emphasizing speed, you don't want too much tension. You just want a little bit extra resistance to get what's called that contrast effect, which means when I get rid of the band, now I'm moving even faster than I would otherwise. So we get like this, and the band increases in tension as it stretches. It also whips you back. So that's a great way to train your nervous system to turn things over. And these bands are just like your muscles. Right. They stretch, they load and they explode. They go back and forth like this. So I call this a triple jab complex. I'll do this like in warm up rounds, 90 seconds in each stance. And you're just mixing between going between a quick jab, double jab, triple jab continuously. So, and I would go back to the single jab just for time. And it's, it's so great, especially on the double and triple jabs, you're getting that pulsing, quick, fast switch action. And uh, as you know too, it's great for mixing up between double, triple, and single jab. It just confuses your opponent. It yeah. throws off their timing. Um, so this is one of my favorite speed drills. Yeah, and then from that, you can obviously do the cross as well, right? Yeah, you could add the cross, even with keeping on the band too. Yeah. And you could add in that cross or, uh, and then next round, get rid of the band and then feel You'll the really twitch. Yeah, you'll really feel it after doing a round with the band, taking the band off, yeah, you'll really feel it. Okay, let's move on to number five. Number five, you're gonna need another resistance band for this one, the speed push-up. Yeah, so people do plyo push-ups. Now, plyo push-ups are more for power, maximum effort, because again, you're not doing them super fast, it's just about getting off the ground as, as high as you can. That was a plyo push-up, right? That was the plyo push-up. Right. So the speed push-up just means we're just getting as many reps as we can, full range, as fast as possible. And again, we use the band 
to help pull us down faster and provide some resistance on the way up. And again, you can start with a light band and build up. The goal here is 10 push-ups in 10 seconds. Once you can do that for multiple sets, then you look to increase your band tension to increase the challenge. I can hold my band like this. Now, one thing about this is that it can be a little bit painful in the webs of the hands. So here's another way to set up. So you just have two options for holding. You get on the ground and this is great, not only because it's easier on your hands, but now the band gives you resistance through the full range. So all I'm gonna do, Tony, is exhale up, inhale down, and I'm gonna try to get, you wanna count me up? Yeah, go. Cool. Try to get 10 and 10. So that's the definition of fast switch fiber work. And again, turning those pushovers over real quick, but I'm not shortchanging the range of motion. I was still getting all the way up, all the way down. But the goal is maybe you get five and 10. Yeah. Great start. Next session, get six, then seven. Once you can do 10 and 10, do it for multiple sets. Once you can do that, increase the resistance. And I think you can clearly see how this will really help with punch and speed. Get your stretch reflex going big time. And uh, that slingshot effect that you want the muscles to develop for faster hand speed and faster punches. Nice, let's move on to number four. So this one you need a med ball for, and these are fantastic. The med ball speed chest passes, right? So yeah, we uh, in, your, in our power video, right, we showed really loading up and exploding with the ball. Speed is about turnover. So we're not trying to get as much force, we're just trying to get it there fast and quick. Here's one of the best ways. You can use a wall, but anytime you can just do it by yourself, that's great. Hinge at the hips slightly, and the focus here is, you're gonna exhale out as you explode the ball, and on the bounce, Think about pulling it back. You wanna get a push-pull effect here. So I'm gonna get locked in, hinge. Shaking the whole building here <laughs> with some speed. We can also work it one arm at a time. It's not gonna be as fast, obviously, as two arms, because it's only one arm, but. And that's my weak side. So again, pay attention between weak and strong side. Start weak then go strong, then go weak again. Twice as many in the weak side to strengthen the imbalance. Now, where in a session would you put these in? This is great in the beginning for just maximum speed work. So speed and power is best trained early in a session where you're most fresh and focused, but you can also, at the end of a session, develop speed endurance, right? I could do 20 on, 10 off right. for eight rounds, four minutes. So it's a nice little finisher too. But again, if you're looking at maximum speed, do it early in the session. Nice, let's move on to number three. Number three, you don't need any equipment for, what's this one, BJ? This one is not only one of the ultimate core and shoulder stability exercises, but it really helps develop your triceps. Now the triceps, the back of the arm, it's an elbow extensor, right? So that's gonna be what's gonna really help you fast punches. You're not really winding up as much, right? It's just trying to get there quick. So it's also a really big fast twitch muscle fiber. So Fast movements are great for developing your triceps. We're gonna go here, go wide stance. The focus is keeping the hips and shoulders square to the ground. You inhale down as you transfer from hands to forearms, <sighs> exhale up, and then switch sides. Start slow and eventually, <sighs> and we build up speed on that. And it's gonna, I mean, the pump is incredible. Yeah. Great for strengthening the elbows. And again, as you add speed to that movement, you're gonna develop the muscles responsible for getting your hands out to your opponent really quick and fast. Yeah, that's great. And not only that, I can see, because to do that, you need a bit of coordination. So what that's also working is, is your brain as well. 100%. Who doesn't want to work with brain? Let's move on to number two. Number two, this is not just a speed drill, it's also a reaction drill, right? And one of the best ways to increase speed is to increase your reaction time. So this one's fun. What we'll do is this. I like to do this eyes closed because when you close your eyes, you heighten your other senses and you get a better kind of inner body awareness. So what I'll do is we got the six punches, right? We got the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six. So here we go. Tony's gonna react to one of the six punches on command as fast as he can. One, one, two, one, three, four, six, five. Killed it. And we go like this for three minute rounds and then I would switch or 90 seconds I go, 90 seconds you go. Or again, just a nice five or 10 minute drill yeah. 
to wake up for your, your practice or your fight. Yeah, that's great. And especially you've got to listen to what your partner's telling you, but as well, you're thinking about speed. So it's another one that's not just working speed and reactions, it's really working your brain as well. And I imagine this is great for people with Parkinson's because Parkinson's huge in boxing now. It's just one of them, just popped in my head. Anyway, let's move on to number one. Okay, so I see you got the battle rope, BJ. So another hand speed option. And again, you don't want the rope to be so long or heavy that you can't move it quick. So speed, is about turnover. And a lot of people do this to what are the first thing that happens, just like with boxing. They hold their breath, right? And you're gonna conk out fast. So try to get what's called a rhythmic breathing strategy. You're gonna do four waves, inhale through the nose, four waves, exhale through the mouth. Keeping two hands together. Try that for more endurance, up to 60 seconds. If you wanna do it more as just pure speed, 10 seconds on, 20 seconds off, up to four minutes. And again, focus on the breathing. Let the breathing drive the movement. Don't get behind your breathing because then you're gonna conk out and you're gonna bring those bad breathing habits into the ring. I will notice you brought them together, but you can also do the alternating. 100%, you can do doubles, alternating. You can even change the grip and go more thumbs up. Yeah. Lots of options. I can go inside. I can go outside, I can add lunges with these. Battle ropes really unlock a lot of options in your training. Yeah, fantastic drill. Now, before I give you the bonus tip, I just want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video. Do you ever wake up and feel absolutely terrible? Me too. Mornings can be tough, feeling tired, groggy, and totally unmotivated. And the problem was for me, I wasn't getting good quality sleep and I didn't know what to do about it. And then boom, I got this, the Pod Pro from eight sleep and since I got this I've been sleeping like a baby. It actually heats and cools the surface of the bed according to my body temperature and now when I wake up I'm always feeling how I want to feel because I'm sleeping how I want to sleep. It also attracts my heart rate, my heart rate variability and my sleep cycles as well and you probably know that you sleep a third of your life so you should always want to be striving for good quality sleep and now you can so if you're a person who needs better to sleep to live a better life you can get yourself one of these pro pod covers from eight sleep and now you can get 150 dollars off one of these or a cover that fits any mattress just go to eightsleep.com forward slash boxing and i'm telling you you won't regret it if i had one of these when i was in the olympics maybe i would have slept better i would have fought better and my olympic medal wouldn't have been bronze it would have been a different color so if you want one of these now i highly recommend them go to eightsleep.com forward slash boxing and get 150 dollars off one of these Pod Pro covers. Now what I used to do training, what really improved me hand speed was always wear 16 or 18 ounce gloves. What that does, obviously it's, you've got that weight in your hands. Kind of like what we said about the dumbbells or even the resistance bands, where it's kind of pulling your arms down. You know, it's gonna help your shoulder endurance. And then what happens when you're always training in the 16 ounce gloves on the bags, in sparring, doing mitt work is when you then put some 10 ounce gloves on, wow, it's, it's like unbelievable. It's like, shall I box some of them dumbbells and putting them down? The speed is there. So always condition your body to wear these bigger gloves. This was how to punch faster. Do you wanna know how to punch harder? Well, we created an in-depth video showing you some exercises so you can develop punching power strength. Click here and watch this video next.